Hello there and welcome to a very different video today because we're going to be combining two of my hobbies. Of course, Lego, you know that already, and also 3D printing, which you might not have known because I haven't featured it too much here on the channel. But I do love a good 3D print. In the past, I've printed my own Lego bricks, I've printed my own minifigure displays, and I'm probably going to revisit the minifigure display at some point because there are a few more improvements I can make. But right now, you probably already saw it. I had it half done by yesterday's video. So if you go back and watch that after this video, you'll see there's half a tower there. It's actually taken me three days to print all of these. And we will be taking a closer look. There's a different one on the bottom, which houses the 25th anniversary of Phantom Menace diorama I created earlier on this year. But for the most part, they're all the same design. This one's actually broken, which is why it's not behind me. And I did end up printing a replacement. I'm keeping this as spare. I'm not going to get rid of it just in case. Well, I say in case there's ever another diorama, there's always going to be some more dioramas. But I really do like how it looks. And I think that the green levels between them all. I don't know if any of you remember a game called Tiny Death Star. I refused to do the final update when they took down the game. So, in fact, I am still playing it to this day. And the green bars between them, it's more of a sand green in the game. But they are for all of the apartment buildings, which all of your Bittersons live in. If you don't know about the game, Google it. It is a ton of fun. And that's what it reminds me of. Separating all the dioramas is very much like that game. It's a tower game and... As I said, definitely worth a Google. But I've actually taken this design off of, I think it was Thingiverse. There was already a rough design. Improved it a bit, tweaked it to fit the dioramas. I had to make it a bit bigger and sort out a few different problems with the bottom not being the correct size. But as I said, we'll take it to the desk and have a closer look. So something that might not come across when they are behind me up there, and I have actually moved them all to my desk, my desk is not big enough to show them all off, so I will be showing them off in hand. It's just the size of each of these cases for the dioramas. Now, the bottom one is actually glued down to its base, and hopefully this gives you a better idea of just how big these cages are. They are somewhat hollow, they're just the frames of them, but they house the dioramas. Each of these dioramas can fit in and out and they can be taken in and out fairly easily compared to just how close the scale is. One thing I completely forgot when I was scaling this up is that all the dioramas that I've created mimic the typical Lego Star Wars diorama base. So they all have these 1x2 grill tiles on the outside. I did not take that into consideration when I was printing these off. So I printed them um, more or less to scale of the actual black bases. The numbers didn't line up exactly, but I just rounded up, called it a day. Thankfully, there is millimeters extra space and needed for them one by two grills. Otherwise, this would have been a wasted day and this video would be coming out tomorrow, for instance. But I've glued it to the base just so this bottom one is secure because it's what everything else is relying on so that they don't collapse and fall down. The depth of these match that unit perfectly so the top is nice and flush. They're backed up to the wall and they've got this very interesting design so that they don't fall off the top. But at the same time, they're not covering too much of the front. So what happens is I get this shorter one, which I've just cropped down using, I think it was Prusa Slicer. So if you are into 3D printing and you don't use Prusa, definitely give that a go. I have a Voxel Lab Aquila 3D printer. I think it's the X2, but don't hold me to that. So if you do want to know more about my 3D printing, I can definitely do at the very least another short just to tell you how I do it, it's not an easy task. It's something that you've got to find fun to enjoy. But I've modified this, cut it down, and all that happens is these clip on, obviously, the other way around. But they clip on just like that. And as you can see, it's nice and secure. This really isn't going anywhere because you've got... It's like a Lego build, really. You've got to have not only enough space to house them down here... But this piece here is stopping them from going too far to the right. This piece is stopping them going too far to the left. And it is a gigantic jigsaw puzzle. But this makes the dioramas look so, so much better. And I've seen so many different 3D printed displays for ships. You can get them. You can make your own for the helmets to come out of your wall without putting a whole shelf in there. And it's 
definitely something I've considered from the back. You may remember a while back I showed off my 3D printed minifigure display, which is currently not housing it, not housing any of my minifigures, but it's down there in my Star Wars display shelf, which you can't see. It's just off screen. But I really do like how these have turned out. It's now a permanent part of my display. One day I'm going to need another unit for all my bricks. So inevitably it is going to be moved around. But it also means compared to the older shelf that I had just next to me. That was taking up too much space for all the dioramas. I mean it was pretty much this size for all of the dioramas. And it only fit five of them. So if you take a look at how big this case is compared to one of the newer shelves it's about just over a half we'll call it two thirds of the height which means for every three dioramas I can fit another I can fit another two dioramas in this slot which is really really nice and perhaps one day when I make a few more dioramas at the minute I've got a handful I want to keep one day I can add them extra to and I'm definitely going to need the space at some point but I'm really happy with how they turned out. Again, if you want a closer in-depth video about how you can go about making these, I won't be selling these as, first off, it's not my original design. So I can leave the original design I used from Thingiverse in the description. If you do want to give it a go, definitely let me know if you are into 3D printing yourself because it's really cool seeing all of the LEGO fans from the LEGO community that are into 3D printing and all of the designs you can see across the internet. So definitely let me know down in the comments and this is just really a video to show off what I've done and point it out. It's going to be in the background but you wouldn't necessarily know that I printed this off myself and there are some really cool things you can do with 3D printing. So if you are a big fan of LEGO and want to take the extra step, it's an expensive hobby. The printer itself costs hundreds of pounds. Then you've got to look at all the plastic. It does go quite far. So I was running out of green and I was low on it. So I didn't expect to finish this whole thing with the green filament. But it doesn't take up too much plastic, which is really, really nice. There's no waste because you're able to print these upside down. And as I said, unlike the original design, I actually hollowed out the middle. So what happens is when we've got a diorama... I don't tend to fill out the diorama fully. We've got the base here which I've created. The instructions are for free on Rebrickable if you do just want the instructions for the bases. I think I was able to build five for about 50 quid off Lego. So I'm sure you can get them cheaper than £10 a base on Rebrickable. But as you can see the outline of it does match up to what is here on the 3D printed stands. And it does match up pretty well. As you can see, there's a little black seeping fruit, but not too much. And this tends to be the only base because then I plate across it at a few plates and it never reaches the bottom in the middle unless I have to put down a lot of tiles in the middle and need that extra support. But that's only temporary. So it really does match up very nicely. And as I said, it's now a permanent part of the display in the background. So I hope that clears up. A few questions around it. If you do have any questions around 3D printing in general, let me know in the comments because I've been doing it for a year and a half now. So even though I don't know everything, I have found out quite a bit and had so many struggles with it. And honestly, it is a world of fun if you do want to get into it yourself. And especially when paired with something like the Lego Hobby, you can create some amazing designs that... Not only a call cool for Lego builds or call cool for 3D printing, but really show the connection between the two. And I'm very happy I managed to print this off. There's definitely a few other Lego projects that I'd like to do. I tend to spread out my 3D printing because, as I said, it's an expensive hobby and it can get very stressful if I'm doing it a lot. But let me know if there's anything else you want to see 3D printed for Lego in the comments below. And before I wrap up this video, I'd just like to show you these are the bricks that I printed. There's only four of them because I don't really see myself using these. Perhaps I could do a 3D printed versus Lego video where I print a load more bricks and see which one holds up more, which one's stronger, which one looks better because these are pretty cool. And if you can print bricks at home, it's definitely much, much cheaper than buying them from Lego. And I've also created my own minifigure display which is a door frame, but as you can see, there are studs on the bottom, which allows you to stack minifigures 
vertically and make use of all the space above them especially if you've got shelves on a wall you can just stack these up and i really think the cmf series need to have something like this so not only you can make space of your horizontal shelf space but also start building up and much like larger cities you see all these tall buildings you have some tall towers of cmfs Perhaps some people would buy more if they had the space to store them. So definitely let me know what you think. If you want to see more 3D printed videos, do drop a like on this video and subscribe for more awesome LEGO content. As always, may the bricks be with you.